Alright, welcome back. Today we're gonna do the second part of our third person character controller and it's going to be our camera controller. Now in third person car camera control, what happens is always that we're rotating around a certain object and that is our main character. So, I have a Google Drive and I decided to put all the scripts in there so you can just copy and paste them. But I'm only gonna put, starting from here, I'm gonna put just the main script which is the camera controller script and everything else you're just gonna copy and paste the the actual code or the logic itself but the main uh, what's it called template is gonna be in my hard drive and I'm just gonna link it whenever I can now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you guys to take that script and just put it inside your main data uh, asset browser. Now I made a new world called a camera controller. There's a box dot mesh. I just added a small little box called a main character. It's not gonna move, but it's just gonna be there for show. And then the other thing I have is a spectator, which is main player and a listener, and it's not controlled. So just gotta be careful with that. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start the code and what I did was in the main character I added the camera controller as the new component and it has a certain custom properties that I have on it and I just left it there if you wanna edit those that's up to you if you don't that's up to you so let's start with a little bit of code um there's a few values we have and we're gonna use them to actually code our stuff one is the radius we're gonna rotate around the object. So we need a radius, how far away it is. The speed, horizontal being left, right, vertical being up, down. The height offset so it doesn't start from the floor and ruin clipping. Then we have a minimum height and a maximum height or maximum. And that's gonna be how, how high and how low can the camera itself go. Then we have an enumerator. Over here is just like a little option settings I gave. So if you decide to make the object itself it's going to choose itself if you choose a custom it drops a little word world node here so you could just click and drag it there and it's going to choose that object to follow and then i just have uh, a few private variables which i'm going to use to uh, actually code so let's start coding this stuff i'm just going to make it bigger i should have done this for the c plus plus but next time all right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the mouse position. <laughs> Excuse me. And I don't really have it here, so I'm just going to write it here. Vector2 mouse position. And I'm going to call it a new vector2. And then we're going to use this as our main mouse position. You don't really have to, but I want to make it a little easier for us. So we're going to do... Whoops mouse position equals to and we're gonna go into the input settings and we're gonna take the mouse delta we're gonna make mouse coordination delta sorry mouse delta is just the rate of change of the mouse which doesn't change that much but the coordination delta changes whenever you move left and right next we're going to do the angle and the height now if you remember your old mathematics when something is at an angle there's a trigonometry equation which requires at a certain angle that you use sine and cosine I'm just gonna go and write it down here but I guess I'll have to explain it so without making it too detailed if you have an object and you have another object and it's at a certain angle you can make a little right angle triangle and you have this length and the length of this object would be at the angle theta and it's going to be the ly and the lx so the ly which is the length that's the height of it is going to be if you remember your trigonometry is going to be the total length times the opposite was sine times sine theta and lx being l cos theta i am bad at this anyways so we're gonna use this equation like a hundred times but we're gonna do it every second so it does save ourselves 
So first things first, we're going to do the angle, which is going to be our angle left and right. I'm going to do a plus equals to, so it's angle plus the, plus the, what do we call it? The difference. And first we're going to do the invert, was it Y? No, it was the X because we're, we're doing left and right. So it's going to be the invert X times our mouse position dot X because we're doing left and right and then we're gonna have to actually times it by the game dot I uh, the inverse frame so it doesn't actually like destroy our movement and it's consistent per our frames and then we're gonna add the rotational speed of the horizontal and what that does is whatever speed we set it it's gonna move at that speed this is gonna reset it and this will reset it, the IFPS, the mouse position X will choose which, does, which way to go and the invert will choose whether we want to reverse our movement from our thing. So that's our angle. Now what about height? We're going to do the same plus equals, but in height we're going to do something different. It's called clamping. What clamping is, is basically it sets a number between two numbers and that's clamping so if you decide the number to go a bit above the maximum it's going to push it back to the max so we're going to make it give me a second the height equals to mathlib dot clamp all right and we're going to do um, height and we're going to do plus equals so it's going to be the height plus the difference that we're going to do and the difference is going to be our inverted y so that makes it left right instead of right left I mean up down instead of down up and then we're gonna do the same thing over here which is the mouse position dot y so how much we move um, on the up down and then we're gonna reset it so game dot ifps and then we're gonna times it by its um, where are we let's go vertical now that's half done now we're gonna have to actually set its minimum and maximum so once you put two arrows it's gonna ask you for the minimum and maximum and we have it up here maximum height and minimum height I'm gonna take minimum height put it in our minimum and then I'm gonna take the maximum height and put it in our maximum height and that fixes our height little problem all right now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to use endpoint. I've been doing it in both, so literally saves me time. And what I'm going to do over here is because it's a little, if you look at it, it says it's never been read yet. So we're just going to initialize angle equal to zero. This way it saves us. Or we can do it a little bit easier. Um, angle equals to zero. This way it doesn't give us any problems but apparently it still does anyways uh, once that's done let's do the next thing which is the new point inside our vector 3 that we're gonna put the camera in and for this we're gonna actually just make it super simple so let's just do endpoint dot x we're gonna do for each one separately so it doesn't actually have to make a new um, memory slot inside our little guy now remember what we did with the whole sine and cosine theta this is the time where we use it so we take our mathlib dot cosine if I remember correctly it was cosine for the X was it yep it was cosine for the X and we use it at the angle that we have and then we times it by the length which is the radius all right and then for the y we do the mathlib dot sign the angle and then we times it by the length which is the radius that we give and then for the z we're gonna do height and then I believe it was plus or times. I think it was plus height offset. Or maybe it was negative minus height. Eh, we'll find out once we play with it. And then once that's done, 
we're not done yet because now it's rotating around the origin what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna make it rotate around the object itself that we want to rotate and in our case it's object follow so what we're gonna do is endpoint equals to whatever changes we did with our rotation and offset by the mouse coordination plus the object follow dot world position so now if the world the object itself is like somewhere to like I don't know 12 15 and, and like 160 it's gonna be that same number plus whatever rotational differences we have and the radius and stuff so we're done with the position now we actually have to set our camera to that now if I remember correctly where did I go here's our main character which is called the main player and if you are curious I said if the main player if the main player of the game is not empty then we take it but if it is empty we make a new spectator and we call it as the main player and then we make sure that it doesn't get controlled by input so now what we're gonna do is just gonna be two main lines so main player goddamn dot and we're gonna do world position so we're gonna set its position to be endpoint and then main player dot world look at which is gonna be what the object is gonna look at and for cameras it's gonna be what it's staring at and we're gonna choose the vector position which is gonna be the exact same thing right here which is the objects world position and that's about it well we can save this I'm gonna close this and then let it reimport all right and then I'm just gonna press save and run and so far it's only for the mouse so if I move left it's moving left if I move right moving right down is up up is down just make sure to fix these things and that's about it the offset is about whatever offset we did so it's gonna be that much difference and yeah we got our little camera now if your objects moving like the physics or the position based controller you're perfectly done so the next episode I'm probably gonna either do deviations or I'm gonna start with animations with object uh, with characters I mean I could skip the animations and go with actual game logic but we'll see what is available and what is easier I think deviations is better so something like make the camera uh, move differently as you hold a button so let's say if you press right click and you want to aim the camera will change its position and yeah I guess that's it for coding a camera controller we are done with third person controller we're just gonna add a few more stuff and yeah that's it well see you next time goodbye